Uh, you just watched my other video on grip fighting, okay, on the, um, the concepts of grip fighting. And in that, it took about 32 minutes and I yacked along too much as I always do. But in any event, I covered a lot of basics, fundamentals that are highly important to lead into the discussion I'm going to have here on gripping. So this is volume two or part two of uh, grip fighting, okay? And again, um, I would highly recommend that you um, uh, get on my YouTube channel, Welcome at Steve Scott, and uh, look at the video uh, I have there on gripping, or several videos I have on gripping, I guess, and uh, uh, you can kind of see what we're talking about as well, okay? So in, in the previous video, we talked about the concepts of long and short grips, the tactical, technical uh, importance of, of gripping, uh, a little bit of a history of grip, what gripping is. So if you if you haven't seen that one yet, you should. Uh, so so go to uh, uh, Grip Fighting Volume One. I don't know what I'll name it, but uh, anyway, this one. Okay, this one here. We're going to talk about some specific goals, rules, things you want to do in every match, whether it be a judo match, a sambo match, um, or whatever it is. Again, I'm going to be talking mostly about uh, grappling with a jacket or a belt. Okay. Uh, but this, these, the, these rules can also apply to MMA or no gi, submission grappling, catch wrestling, whatever, uh, whatever your sport or martial art fighting sport is. Um, you know, I think they're they're pretty, not always generic, but somewhat generic. But they're all functional in their basis. Uh, I think you can use them. So anyway, uh, let me just recap what we did in the v video. Uh, I can't say it enough. Everything is a handle whether it's on your body or your opponent's body, whether it was what kind of where he's wearing a jacket, belt, whatever, or no gi situation. Everything is a handle on my body, your body, and I have to keep that in mind. Renee Pomerell taught me that many years ago. I think it's great advice. Another thing, any grips, any grip that works for you, by the way, I'm reading in Winning on the Mat, and I'm on page 43 of my book, Winning on the Mat, and I talk about gripping in it quite a bit. And I also, in the previous video, I'll uh, use my book Sambo Encyclopedia uh, to discuss that. So anyway, that's the that's the, the reference material if you want to use it. Um, but any grip that works for you, page 43, any grip that works for you with a good uh, with a good to high ratio of success is a good grip. In most cases, the throw you choose to use is, a, is designed from the grip that you control your opponent with or counter with. Okay, so that's where you have to be um, skilled in gripping, okay? Know what works for you. That takes a lot of practice and a lot of honest effort on your part in the dojo or a gym or on the mat. So um, think about that. Okay. Here's a, a, a talked about this in the first video. The grip is the first link in the action of attacking and throwing or transitioning to the mat or taking your opponent down. So the grip is the first link in the action of attacking and throwing your opponent. Your grip or how you grab your opponent often dictates how well you move your opponent and what throw or takedown or transition you will use. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's get into the rules of grip fighting. Okay, now over the years, I've coached a lot by the mat side and watch, I've got a video out on mat side coaching. Okay, so uh, I spent a lot of time on the mat as well, you know, as an athlete, but also off the side of the mat uh, as a coach. And I've developed some specific guidelines uh, for mat side coaching, which I, I have in that video. But I also uh, have some things that as, as a mat side coach, I've seen some gripping, grip rules, rules for grip fighting. Again, I'm going to get my drink of water here. Sorry about the water break. <clears throat> so rules of grip fighting. OK, all right. I didn't make all these up. Some I did. Some I observed. Some I learned from and watching very good athletes and learning from great coaches. And, and so here we go. Um, so here's some practical rules to know and apply every time you engage an opponent. The whole idea is to control your opponent. So it's important to try to achieve the dominant grip as often as possible. It isn't always possible. We'll talk about it here. However, real life tells us that this doesn't always happen. You don't always get the dominant grip, okay? You, like like this, the old song, you can't always get what you want. Well, this one, you, but here we go. 
All right, it's also vital that you know how to neutralize and counter your opponent's grip, how to nullify his grip, neutralize it, and counter his grip, and then go on to gain the dominant grip. Remember, the end result in getting the grip is to throw your opponent and win the match or to transition or take him down. Gripping, you don't get style points for gripping. The grip is, is, a, is a means to an end, okay? And I want to get there as quickly as I can, efficiently, with the highest ratio of success, okay? So gripping is essential for a, a successful throw. Grip fighting is simply a means to an end and is a set of necessary and important tools for you to achieve your ultimate goal in throwing or defeating your opponent. The number one rule in grip fighting, immediately after you start the fight or the match, or even after every break in the action, and you start again, Hold your hands up at chest level with your palms facing your opponent so that you pretend you are looking at your opponent through a television screen or a, uh, or a picture frame. This is a good ready posture, and you are prepared to attack and defend. So don't just walk in leading with your face. Keep your hands up. Have your hands up so you can block away grab. You can get aggressive. When you watch a boxer in a match, he doesn't just walk in leading with his chin, does he? When you watch a a football player on the line, a linebacker. He doesn't just drop his hands and run along the side, uh, you know, along the line. He has his hands up, ready to grab. Your hands are a tool. Okay, that's how we reach out and touch someone. We grab someone, have them up and ready. All right. So having them at the ready all the time is essential. And I see this a lot in in new judo athletes and also some sambo athletes as well. In that. Um, they just kind of don't have their hands up when they engage their opponent. And often, almost always, the opponent gets the dominant grip and controls the fight. So have your hands up, okay? Makes sense. All right, number two, always try to get your hands on your opponent first and get the dominant grip. Get the first grip, okay? Don't fight on his terms. And don't let him have the better grip or tie-up, or if it's no gi type of situation. Be aggressive in getting your grip. How you grip fight or fight for the tie-up not only puts you in a position to attack him. Again, I'm reading from my book. I'm sorry about that, but I, I think it's well written here. Not that I'm bragging. I think it's, I can read it better than I can say it, I think, off the cuff. Uh, again, off the cuff. Uh, how it puts you in a position to attack him better, but it also lets your opponent know that you mean business. So if you get the dominant grip, the first grip right off, you're setting the tone. You're the boss. You want to be the boss, okay? You're there to fight, not play. Your initial contact with your opponent is that grip, okay? Be the one who takes control and dictates the terms of the fight. That's fighting. Remember, this isn't a game. This is a fight, okay? All right. Number three, if you can't get the dominant grip, try to break his grip and counter with your own grip or tie up, or you know, grip or tie up. If you can't counter and get the dominant grip, at least get a neutral grip. Nullify his grip. So that's why gripping is important. This is why grip rondori in drill training in the dojo, if you do a lot of grip rondori and, and, and drill training and grip fighting, you will know how to neutralize an opponent's grip. So work on this, okay? Don't just think, I, well, I had a great sensei teach me how to do this, that's enough. No, get in, the, get in and train on it how to... Not only get the dominant grip, but, you know, get a neutral grip, get a, get a nullif nullify his grip, and then counter with your own grip. So sometimes in training, in grip rondori, uh, if, you're, if you're, you know, better than your partner or whatever, uh, put yourself in a bad situation. Let him have the dominant grip so you can learn to nullify his grip or learn to regain control of the grip. So just a tip. That was number three. Number four. If you have to initially be in, in a neutral grip or a tie-up, such as like kumikata, the neutral grip, um, uh, or tie, work hard to dominate the grip. So, if, 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 so in other words, you've got to work hard to dominate the grip. You want all the odds in your favor, to, and you want all the odds in your favor, and a neutral grip gives your opponent just that. It's a neutral grip. You know, it's 50-50 now. And believe me, I don't want to be in a fight where it's 50-50. I want to be in a fight where the odds are in my favor. So in other words, if the, odds, if the odds start out, we're in a neutral grip, quickly get a dominant grip, okay? Um, do everything you can to get the dominant grip, okay? Number five, 
Your grip should lead to something. It should always lead to something. Use your grip or tie up to set your opponent up for your throw or take down a transition. Okay. Make sure the grip you use works best for the throw, take down or transition you want to use. Number six, try not to let your opponent get both hands on you. Do not let your opponent get both hands on you. If, if get one hand is enough. If he only has one hand on me, that doesn't mean that means he's either not close enough to attack me or because he wants to often get both hands on me, not always, but almost 99% of the time, I don't know what the odds are, but he has to have both hands on me to throw me. And likewise, I want both hands on him. But anyway, if he's a one-handed fighter, he can't control you as well as he have, if he has both hands on you. Okay. Number seven, never, ever lead with the same hand and your lead leg. So if I'm reaching out my right hand, I don't step forward with my right foot. Okay. In other words, there we go. If you lead with one hand, don't step out with that same foot. Um, instead, if your lead hand is your right foot, it's your sugar foot, we call it, the one sweet that's sticking out here. It's kind of sugar. It gives them bait, okay? If it's your right foot, if, if, if it's your right foot is lead, I'm going to lead with my left hand. I'm going to grab initially. My anchor hand will be with my left hand. So if my right foot is dominant, my left hand will be my anchor hand initially grabs. And again, what's the anchor hand? That's usually the first hand I put on my opponent. Watch my video on YouTube on the YouTube channel, I discuss that in grip fighting, in grip fighting specifics, I think we call it. Okay. Um, so if, if my right foot is leading and I lead, get my left hand grip, uh, this way uh, I'm not off balance and I'm not allowing my opponent to foot sweep me or to attack with another throw or takedown. So if I lead with the same foot, same hand, I often get swept. I've seen this so often. If you've been around, you've seen it happen to yourself. Hopefully it didn't happen to you. And if it did, you learned from it. Okay. Number eight, use your steering hand as radar. Okay. You can also use your anchor hand as radar. Often, you, but in other words, use your hands to feel how your opponent moves. That's that kinesthetic awareness. Okay. That is radar. If you're a right-handed fighter, try to use your right hand to feel your opponent's movements, whether your right hand is on the lapel in the middle of his chest, or the back or shoulder. By the way, you can also do with this with your other hand. So if my left hand reaches out, I anchor with my left hand by grabbing his lapel, I can feel where he moves, okay? Or I may have grabbed his sleeve with my left hand as an anchor hand. Hold on, my right hand latches over, and now I can move him and feel where he moves as well. So my hands are kind of like radar, okay? They get that feel. Learn to feel that in grip rondori, in, in rondori, and certainly so you can apply that in a real match. So your hands are really radar. I think that's what I'm trying to imply here. I did um, with, you know, with that. Um, so use your hands as radar. Uh, number nine, neutralize your opponent's steering hand. So if he's a right, we talked about this on my other video, uh, my previous video a bit, but I want to go into a little more detail here. Neutralize your opponent's steering hand. So if he's, if he's a right-handed judo or sambo guy, it's probably as, you know, if he's a right-sided thrower, throws over his right hip or whatever, his steering hand is almost always his right hand. It's one at the lapel, around the back. That's his steering or power hand, okay? That's his surite. That's his lifting or hanging hand in Japanese. So I want to I want to uh, neutralize that, all right? Um, if he's a right-handed fighter and wants to get his right hand on you, grip it first and keep it pushed down and away from you so that he can't get his hand on you. This ties, ties in with making him a one-handed fighter. So don't let him get both hands on you. Kill that shoulder. Okay, we talked about that in the other video. Kill his shoulder. Okay, so if I'm a righty and my opponent neutralizes my shoulder by getting a grip and breaking it down or stopping it, putting his hand in there to, to block it, getting the inside grip, okay? You've often heard your coach say, or you, if a coach, you've told your athletes, get the inside grip. That's often really good advice because it neutralizes and controls his shoulders. You are literally steering him, steering his shoulders with your hands, okay? So that's what I'm talking about by neutralizing his steering hand. You'll also neutralize his shoulders, which control his hips and his movement, okay? His, his feet as well. So we're all connected, and that's, it leads from the controlling with the hands, the grip. Emphasize your steering hand. If you're a right-handed fighter, this is your right hand. 
Okay, use it to control your opponent. Your left hand would then assist in getting the grip. That's the anchor hand. I set him up with my left hand, the anchor hand, whether it be at the lapel, his epaulet and sambo, or on a sleeve, uh, the elbow, low, you know, low sleeve at the wrist, whatever it may be. Your left hand would then assist in getting the grip, pulling him, fending off his hand, or on any variety of uses. Some coaches, the right hand, again, going back to Jeff Gleason, he named this the power hand. Again, I picked up the phrase steering hand from Neil Adams, which I, I like both the power hand. That's a good phrase. But the, the steering hand, I think, really really sets it, gives it a, a good direction in what you're talking about here. It really, it's a good name. It's appropriate name, steering, because you're steering him with that right hand, okay, if you're a right-handed fighter. All right. Uh, but I prefer to call it the steering hand because you literally steer your opponent with your hand, okay? You can do that. All right, number 11. I'm not getting fond of getting the thumb. Okay, can you see this here? The thumb, there you go. The thumb caught in my, if I'm a right-handed fighter, caught in my opponent's collar, high up in the collar and the lapel. I don't like my thumb in his collar. I want, if you can see here, wherever they were, okay, if I can't, there, see the grip there, okay? I like my thumb out. Okay, a lot of people do too. I don't like my thumb in and catch and lock it in because what happens when I try to throw him, it locks in place if my thumb's in there, if, I, if my thumb gets locked in his lapel or collar. And that causes what I've often called a floating elbow. Your elbow floats up in the air. So instead of reaching around and using it to dominate and steer, your elbow then pops up. Okay. And uh, so um, I'm not fond of calling uh, getting the thumb caught in the opponent's lapel when grabbing it. Okay. This often leads to a floating elbow. The malady, I like that word, the malady. I'm sorry uh, if I'm too harsh on some people. The malady that happens when a fighter attacks with a right handed throw and his right elbow goes up in the air. Okay. By getting your thumb stuck in your opponent's collar at his neck, you are limiting yourself in how you attack and defend. That's true. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, I've seen many good fighters, you know, again, use their hand. And you see I'm using the heel to push and control, not getting it locked in there, and I let my elbow float up. Don't want to do that. Your posture is important. Rule number 12, shoulders over hips, and shoulders in other words, straight line with your hips. Lower your levels with your legs. This means that your shoulders should be directly over your hips and straight, and have a straight back and good posture. Do not bend over, leaning forward at the waist, okay? Your shoulders are way ahead of your waist and your feet. You're off balance, okay? You put, you put too much weight in your head and your shoulders, and or if you're moving back, you're too much weight in your butt end. So do not be bent over, okay? You see that a lot in wrestling. It's a different grappling sport, but they're all bent over. And to me, in my opinion, for what we do with, with the throwing and transitions and takedowns we use, uh, they're not in position there to attack or defend very well. So um, keep your back straight. Have good posture, okay? Um, don't bend forward with your butt sticking out or your shoulders leaning forward. This puts your body off balance forward or backward. If you have to get lower than your opponent or like to fight from a lower position, a crouching position, lower your level with your legs. In other words, bend your legs, use them like springs, okay? And, and bend forward at the waist, okay? Lean forward. Do not bend over and crouch, okay? Straight back. Your weight, distrib your weight distribution should be 50-50 most or all of the time, even if I'm leading with one leg or the other, okay? I want to make sure my posture, my weight distribution is balanced and solid. So that's really important to practice on every, every time I'm practicing in, in the, you know, the dojo. Okay, so 50-50. Do not be heavy-footed, or tr and or try to st and try to stay on the balls of your feet. Be be grace graceful. It's not you're not being a sissy if you're being graceful. Slide, shuffle, don't don't lumber, don't stomp around. What I call a, a a dead foot or a dead hand. If you put too much weight on it and you can't move it well, it's dead to you. It's of no use to you. Okay, so. Uh, you don't want to be heavy-footed or have a dead foot. You want to be able to move. Okay, so 50-50 weight distribution, very important. Here's an old rule, but the one that still works. Don't cross your feet. Some people say, well, it doesn't matter anymore. Modern judo, modern sambo, you cross your feet. You know, okay, fine, and cross your feet. But I've seen a lot of guys get drilled when they cross their feet because their, their legs get tangled up underneath them. 
I know I used to be an amateur boxer, not a very good one. Don't get that wrong. I wasn't a good one, but I did have good coaching. And I always heard from my coaches in that sport as well, don't cross your feet. And I think when you see any sport, um, when you have movement, either laterally, forward, back, or angles, if you cross your feet, you get them messed up with each other and uh, it just doesn't work. You can't attack or defend well. So do not cross your feet. Old stuff. Believe me, the old stuff still works, doesn't it? Okay, number 15, once you attach onto your opponent with a grip, stay attached to him. Now, remember, my hands and arms control him. I'm, we're, control, we're holding on to each other now. He's holding, holding on to me. So we're attached to each other. We're like one big hunk of people out there. Okay, so we're one, we're connected. All right, if you need to change your grip, don't let go unless he's beaten you to the grip and it's controlling you, and you have to break free and re-grip or re-engage, reset, okay? So if you have to break the grip, do, for, do so for a reason. Get your grip, hold on, hold on for dear life, and beat the snot out of them with it, okay? Uh, use it, okay? So change only when you need to. Number 16, always use two hands to control or attack your opponent's one hand. If I two-on-one his hand... I think the new rules of IJF judo may not allow this. I don't know. I don't keep up with the IJF rules. But I know in AAU judo and in freestyle judo, AAU freestyle judo, and in sambo, you can do this. It's good gripping. In other words, your opponent comes in to grip with you and leads with his one hand, his right hand, okay, or whatever. It's easier to deflect his one hand with your two. Block them both. Use both hands to pop them away. Or if he's gripped you. Pull both two on one. You got more strength. Your two arms are stronger than his one, unless he's a real stud. Then get back in the weight room. You need to. All right. So in other words, you can counter grip more effectively using both hands when possible. A good example for you is to kill or neutralize your opponent's right hand lead. He's led with his right hand. He's gripped me. Okay. Um, you, both hands be on your lapel. We all know this one. Pop it down, right? Spoop, two on one or on your sleeve. Try to pop it down, okay? So two on one whenever possible, right? You have the edge. You always want to have the edge. Number 17, avoid moving directly backward or running forward directly at your opponent. How many new kids in judo we saw, they couldn't wait to get at their opponent. They ran right at him, and the guy turned and drilled them with some kind of a really cool throw for Ipon. Again, sorry for the water break. So moving directly back or forward is too easy for your opponent to throw you. Common sense. But we have to learn common sense. It's not always common. All right. By moving back in a straight line or backing away from your opponent, you appear to be passive. I know I refereed a lot of Sambo matches, been in a lot of Sambo matches. And I can tell you, when I see an opponent, when I see a, a Sambo wrestler backing away, he doesn't want to engage. Okay. So go laterally. Move around and, and sideways, one way or the other. Angles, maybe forward angle. You can even move backward, but don't go straight back. Move back at an angle. And it's also a way if you want to lead him in a direction, in a place on the mat. If you want to get him to the edge of the mat for some reason or whatever, by, by your movement, generally laterally, either right, totally sideways each way, or back corner or forward corner one way, not straight forward and back, okay? You're too easy to get drilled, all right? So work laterally a lot, all right? Um, by moving back or straight, you're too easy to, you know, don't back up. Instead, try to move at angles. If you have to move or avoid him, try to move laterally. And often uh, a good way is after, you know, the referee, you know, like in Sambo blows his whistle, you re-engage or you start, or, or the referee says, how'd you may again in judo? Rather than just run at him, okay, Try to engage hands up and move laterally one side or the other to see how he steps. He may step, you know, you may step to your right and get him to elicit a movement, to re a response, and he will. Then you can quickly latch on him quickly and, and have the edge. So once you engage, don't just run right at him. You know, uh, if you're winning, make him come to you. That's tactically. But, in, 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 you know, because that, that'll kill a few seconds. Don't bat him away or run away. But go laterally and work at angles, okay? Don't go forward or back ever, okay? All right, number 18, uh, oh, yeah, the, number 19, okay. Use your head as a wedge to break the grip uh, if, if necessary. 
Sometimes you may have to bury your head on your opponent's chest, shoulder, or even his arm and use it as a wedge to open up the distance between your body. So if he's beat me on the grip, if he's got a good, short, compact, strong grip, and boom, he's I'm stuck in there, I may have to wedge my head in there uh, to, to push away, push on his shoulder, or even up to the side of his neck, okay? Or his, maybe even his head, a little, little abuse there. Sorry, it works. Oh, that's that's dirty judo. No, it's not. We all do it, okay? Um, like one of my old coaches, Rene Pomerel, said, that's your third arm, okay? Um, he couldn't say TH third arm very well because he was from Luxembourg and had a, a kind of a slightly, well, very heavy French-German accent, and he would call it your third arm. Your head is your third arm, and use it to, to use as a third arm, and that's what he meant in that case. So that's where you wedge there. You may have to push that to open them up, okay, to create some distance to get some working room. So sometimes your head is your third arm or your third arm, all right? Um, number 20, don't be saddled thinking that you can only use uh, a, a neutral grip, you know, the lapel and sleeve grip or collar tie-up, okay? Well, this is a basic grip used to learn new throwing skills and put each other on a neutral basis. Again, it is a neutral grip, kumikata, the standard natural grip, okay? All right. Don't fall in love with a grip for any reason other than it works and is the best to, to, to use to throw, take down, or transition an opponent. So don't say, I only use one grip. That's all, that's all the judo I'm going to do. I can use all the throws with one grip. I've heard people say this. Well, uh, they don't really do that, number one. And number two, uh, they generally don't throw a lot of people either. Okay, so if you're only locked into one grip, um, you better train harder. You better get, get your head right and, and start using grips to dominate your opponent, okay? So that's just the way it is. If you don't like that rule, I'm sorry. That's what I believe, and I've seen it work a lot, okay? All right, be willing and prepared to change grips to suit the situation, and guess what? To dominate your opponent, okay? You should use the grip to dominate your opponent. If you can't dominate, nullify or neutralize the situation, and then counter grip so you, again, dominate the grip, okay? It's all a matter of controlling him, and gripping is how we do it. Number 21, control his shoulders. Again, this is what we, I like the short grips, using my anchor hand, you can steer your opponent by controlling his shoulders and manipulate his body better. Okay, so be very aware. If I grab on a low sleeve grip, again, why am I grabbing there? There must be a reason for it. I want distance between me and him, okay? But if I just think, I just don't think about how I grab him, you know, if I just grab really low too much, I'm not controlling his shoulders. Again, if I control his shoulders, his shoulders control where the hips move often. So by controlling his shoulders, I control his movement because, again, we lead with our hips. My old friend Harry Parker said, always lead with your hips. Again, if you can control his shoulders, you will control his hips almost all the time. So understand that. And also, we talked about this before and also in my other video, kill his shoulder. Break his shoulder down. Dominate him. If he's a righty, break his shoulder down where he can't use it to get square back, square back his shoulder and get a grip. You do not want to do you do not want to give him a strong shoulder. So kill his grip, make him have a weak shoulder, I call it, but don't let him have a strong shoulder. For a variety, if I have a right hand lapel grip, I want that hand up there to, my power hand, my steering hand to steer. But if my opponent either gets the inside grip or comes over the top and breaks my shoulder down, he has killed my shoulder and in essence shut me down from attacking him. Okay, so he's neutralized my grip. He's nullified my movement. Now, that means I have to reset. That means he's winning at this point, and he may attack me, so I better be wary. Okay, so there you go. Um, anyway, number 22. I guess I had 23 rules. I'm sorry, I thought I had 22. 22, don't use only your hands to control your opponent. I know wrestlers love to call it hand fighting or hand wrestling. Okay, it's a great phrase. Your hands grab him, but your elbows, arms, shoulders, and head all help in steering your opponent and controlling his movement. So I grab with my hands, yes, but I'm also using my elbows, my shoulder, my, my, my body, my head, even if I have to wedge like we talked about earlier, to control his movement. 
Okay, so don't just grab with the hands and think you're going to lead him around with your hands. Use his elbow. Boy, you should be able to see my hands are really working here. But use your elbows to steer him with the elbows too. Don't just use your hands to control. Use your elbows, arms, shoulders, everything. Movement. Use your hips. Lean in. Move him around. Don't lean in too much where you're off balance, but control. Okay. Number 23. And this is the most important rule of grip fighting. Any grip that works and is allowed in the rules of your fighting sport and, and, and works with a good ratio of success and works for you when you need it to work for you is a good grip. Okay, so as again, I like to quote people, as Sean Watson said, it's only pretty if it works. Okay, you can have the coolest looking grip you saw this great judo champion do, but if it doesn't lead to anything, it's useless. Okay, so gripping is a tool. It's very pragmatic. It's very functional. It's how we reach out and touch someone. And again, I don't want him touching me first. I want to be able to control him. So if the if the grip works for you and works with you for you with a good ratio of success and works when you need it, it's a good grip. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, this is part two on uh, grip fighting. Grip fighting is that important. So it devoted two of these little uh, uh, lecture type videos of mine. Again, go to my YouTube channel. Uh, look at the videos there. I've cut one on grip fighting. It's, it's kind of short, uh, but there's a lot to it. And again, like I said in the first video, uh, part, part one of this video, these series, I guess, grip rondori is the best way to develop grip fighting skills, real functional, pragmatic, real world grip fighting skills. Don't just say, I do this grip only for this throw. You will find what, by doing a lot of grip fighting drills, a lot of grip rondori, that you will be fluid in your movement and you will find how you can work your grips effectively, functionally into your throws, transitions, or takedowns. So don't just, you know, have some academic approach to gripping. Uh, this sets up, that sets up, and take 18 different steps to do something that you could be doing in one or two steps. If you do a lot of grip rondori, you will discover that. Of course, you need good coaching and drilling as well in specific drilling. Um, but we'll be having a video on drill training as well and, you know, out there. So we'll be talking about that. But grip rondori is the best way to develop gripping, in my opinion, and grip fighting drills. And I've used them for many years of my athletes, and they've done quite well with it. You know, some better than not, but it works. So anyway, that, there we have it on uh, grip fighting part two. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I will see Gripping you next time. is an essential part of judo, okay? Now, there's some fundamental things you should do, some fundamental things you should not do. We're going to cover the bad things first, okay? So, at, when I bow, we start, I'm going to fight Kyle. Tell me what I'm doing wrong, okay? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Uh, look at my right hand, look at my right foot. Now, tell me what I'm doing wrong. What am I doing wrong? You stepped with the right foot and, the right, and you put out the right hand. That's exactly hand. right. That's exactly right. So when I'm fighting here and I'm starting, I want to see if I'm leaning with my right foot, I want to get my left hand first to jerk him in. Because I don't want to do this because guess what? He could foot sweep me right away. Boom. And I've seen it happen a lot. So if we're coming out here and I do this, bam, I'm asking him to get drilled. Okay? All right. So when, we're, when we start... Hands up. Now, when, another thing I don't want to do is be all bent over. i got to have a good posture. It's almost like I'm throwing my hips forward when I do this. When you're gripping somebody and they're all bent over, they're off balance. I don't want to be that guy off balance. So I want to be, instead of being all like this, you can just dominate me. So I, I want to be upright. Okay? Okay. Now, some other things. When we're doing this, I don't want you making big looping movements with your hands. Everything is like... It's like a boxer would do, really short, choppy movements with the hands. Don't do big looping movements. If I'm coming out here, it's pretty obvious. Boy, he's just nailing. He come in with a nice serenagi and I'm taking a trip. Those are some things you don't want to do, okay? So keep your hands in close and short. Now, what's the things you need to do? All right, as soon as you bow, hands up, step forward, hands up, just like how did that perfect. It's like I'm looking through a screen here. Computer screen, TV screen, whatever, okay? And when I make contact, when we're out gripping, and I make contact, I'm going to get, my hand is probably going to be what I call my anchor hand. 
I got a good anchor on him because now I can start moving and doing other stuff. Okay? I'm going to be grabbing his sleeve with my anchor hand. That's okay. You're going to have one hand you're going to start with, and the other hand you're going to get and move around. Uh, don't just go in there and go like that because he will stop you. Okay? So have a plan which hand you're going to lead with. Is, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Now, are you doing that now? Are you thinking about that? Kids can think about this. You're not, you're not dumb. Just because you're kids doesn't mean you can't know these things. You should do them, okay? Yeah. Or adults sometimes too. <laughs> okay, so we're doing this. We'll take, so I got my hand, I got my grip. Now I can start working them. Now this other hand, what, what we call the power hand, or your steering hand often, okay? Now that's the hand, and I never want to just kind of grab at the same time because I'm still open and he could come in and hit me with a move. So once I get my first hand here, my anchor, now I'm going to start, as soon as I grip here, I'm going to start moving at the same time. Now I never like to go forward or backward in a straight line because I'm walking right into a throw. Okay, so when I grab, I'm going to probably move one way or the other, and I'll probably move over to my right like this and get my grip. You ever watch your coach grip? That's exactly what he does. And he's gripped a lot of guys and set them up with his throws. Because now, I'm thinking in my mind, I want to set this guy up with a throw. So I'm thinking, don't just want to grip him. What do I want to do with that grip? i got to take it to another level. So, like say you're a Tayotoshi guy or girl. Okay? So I get my grip, and I'm going to circle around the outside. And as soon as I circle around the outside, I get my set my hand there, and boom, I shoot in my Tayotoshi. So we can start setting things up right from the get-go. A lot of the best grips are the ones you grip and throw with immediately. Okay? And I know you guys work on that. Grip and throw. You can grip and throw, foot sweep them. Or set them up with a, an uchimata, so a big throw too. So what we're going to do first, we're going to do some gripping drills here. But what we're going to do as soon as you bow, hands up. Man, that's cardinal rule. You've got to have your hands up. Now also, when you're gripping and your hands up, don't go batting away. You get a penalty. It's very defensive, you know, passive, passive type kind of judo. You don't want to do that. If I'm going to have to bat his hands down, boom, I'll catch and go like that. I want to be able to catch him. We'll talk about that momentarily. But I don't want you batting the hands down like this. I want you to get him and go. Okay? So if he, my hands, his hands are up, Lee here, catch that. He's going to react, isn't he? He's going to kind of pull back, and as he does, I start to set up, and there I go. So that's some stuff I can do to start. Right? It makes sense. Now, we're going to have a gripping. We're going to use this. I want you to use this on each other. We're going to have grip rondori. And what grip rondori is, is just like rondori, except you don't really throws or pins or anything like that. It's just gripping. And I'm going to try to outgrip Kyle. Kyle's going to try to outgrip me. We're going to do it for about a minute or so. Then we'll get a new partner. We'll bow and get a new partner. Now, if at some point we're gripping here and I, you know, I get a better grip than him, and man, I just dominate him and say, okay, you got me. Start again. Okay, cool. I won the first round. Okay? He might win the second round, but it's like grip Rondori. I want to beat him in Rondori. Now, when you grip Rondori, you've got to be real intense. You've got to be real intense. You know, when I was coaching young guys and girls for a long, long time, in this very room, years ago, we would have grip Rondori a lot. Okay? And sometimes the gripping would get really, really aggressive and rough. Harder than regular Rondori almost. And they just really, really aggressive. So you got to get that way. you gotta, you got to remember, this is a fight. It isn't a game. Okay? So when we grip, we're going to do this drill. Now remember, some things I want to see you do. I want to start with your hands up. And I don't want you to leave the same side foot. I want you to cross grip here. And when you get your hook on, you move. Don't just stand there and grab. Because you're giving him an opportunity to throw you. As soon as I get my grip, as soon as I want to get my grip, whatever it is. Like power, out here, power hand here, or here, wherever it is. As soon as I get that, boom, I'm going to start moving. I'm going to start setting them up. Okay? Those are some things I want to do in this grip round. Okay? This rondori round. But here's what it'll look like. The bow, hands up, and now we'll start fighting for the best grip. Now, another thing also. Keep your elbows in. Don't extend your arms. Okay? Again, like a boxer. You don't see boxers throwing punches like this on TV, do you? They're close and tight. Same with us in judo. Same here. So keep your elbows in. And when I work, boom, like this. Keep them in tight and close. Now, I'm going to try to outgrip him. He's going to try to outgrip me. And it's going to be a real contest. I want you to be really, really aggressive and really competitive in this drill. Okay? Don't be mean or do stupid stuff, but be really competitive. Does that make sense to everybody? That the best way to train, train, train for good hard grip fighting is to do a lot of grip fighting. 
but do it right. Okay? So what I'm going to have you do is, as soon as we're going to break here, get a new get a partner, face each other. When, when Coach Kenny says, you May, we bow, hands up, get at it, we'll go for a minute. Okay? And then we'll bow to each other, shake hands, get a new partner. We'll go three or four rounds of that, one minute rounds. Okay? All right, get a partner. Let's go. It all starts with your grip. When I'm starting to grip my opponent, when Kyle's out here and I'm gripping him, I have every intention in my mind, as soon as I get a hold of him, I'm going to hit him with my knee drop. Okay, I have a really good idea what I want to use. Okay, now, here's how we really sink it in and make it work for us, okay? We're going to do this drill here. And it's a gripping drill, but it's a throwing drill even better. All right, so I want to get my grip. Now, I'm going to throw him over my right side. Okay? All right, not over my right shoulder, over my right side. So it could be, I, I like to do it pawn style, not morote, but it's pawn style. It's just, I'll, I like it, I prefer that. But what I'm going to do with my left hand, I'm not going to grab his sleeve. I'm going to grab his lapel. Okay. So now, what's going to happen? We can just, just in fact, is we didn't have to grip by Let's just hold each other. Okay. So I'm going to have just one hand on him. My left hand on his lapel. See that? And when I do this, when I do this, I'm just going to step him sideways. I'm going to step sideways, and I'm going to hit my knee drop Sarinagi. All right, so all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to step sideways, hit my knee drop to the nut, and there he's ready to go. Okay? All right, then it'll be his turn, and he'll, are you right? Okay, yeah. He'll grab the left hand on, and he'll step me sideways, and he'll drop into his knee drop to the nut. Okay? And that's what we're going to do. That's the drill we're going to do. I'm going to grip, left hand grip, side step, knee drop to the nut. He's going to get up, left, on my, left hand on my lapel, side step. Knee drop Sainagi. Now, why are we doing that? Because I want to create movement which will break his balance. And I want to get the grip that I can control his shoulders best with. If I grab here and try to do the sidestep Sainagi, look at all the space. He's going to cut and stop me. He knows his judo. All right? But if I get him here, he may still try to block me, but I still have a better inside shot of catching that. Even if he turns and does a hip cut, I can still catch him. I can control his shoulders better. I gotta control the shoulders. That's what this drill teaches you. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. So what I'm gonna have you do is this, okay? My turn first. Left hand on the lapel, side step, knee drop say nine. You actually do it. Okay? It'll be his turn. He'll grip me, one hand, side step, knee drop say nine. We'll do five each. Normally in regular practice, we do a lot more than that. But right now it's just five because I want you to get the idea, because we've got a few other things to do. Then we're going to get some grip on Dory again. Okay? All right, five each. Right. Let's go. Now, we're going to step them, and we're going to get a big, bigger throw now. Okay? We, we're controlling the lapels. Now I want to do something with my right hand. Okay, I'm going to control that. Who likes to do like Harai Goshi Uchimata, big, big crossbody Osotogari? You like Osotogari? Okay. All right, those are great throws. Okay? Now, I don't always, I'm not always able to get the kind of my hand on the lapel. In fact, I may not always want that. Okay? Now, I'm kind of a big, tall guy. And even if you're not a tall guy, even if you're a middleweight, you're tall for your weight class. You know? You could be, use your hands. I'm going to work around here. Instead of grabbing here, now I'm going to grab around here. Okay? So, what I want to do is I want to pretend like I take my belt off and I'm wrapping it over Kyle's body or a rope. I'm going to rope him in and pull him into it. Okay? Think about that now. So we're gripping, and we start. Now, lead with the foot here. Now, I want my right hand actually right about here. Everybody see this? I don't want to grab really big over here because he'll throw me. If I reach too far, he'll, I mean, ooh, he'll take me off and counter me. You know, rear throw or a nagi type thing. All right? So when I do this, when I'm gripping, I want to get my right hand around just about here. There's a flop of ghee here. Even on the tight knees, it's always kind of loose right here. That's what I want. Okay? That's a good handle. Remember, these jackets, they're, they're great handles. Everything's a handle. Okay? So, when we're doing this, we're gripping here. Okay? I, whatever, I, my hand might be here. But now, I want my right hand over here. But if I come and do this, he'll see it coming, won't he? So, earlier tonight, we were talking about moving around to the side. Now, watch me. I got this grip. Now, I'm going to move around to the side. I'm going to get my grip here. I got him sucked in. Now look at, do I, 
We don't want to have floating elbows. We want them down. I want to crush them with my elbows. And if he tries to pop them up, I keep, I'm keep moving my elbows down. Because now I can do this thing. Can I get those to the guard? That's what I'm going to go for now. Okay? So from this angle, watch. So we're gripping here. All right? I get my grip. There's my anchor. I want my right hand right here on this flop of gee. This great handle right here behind his shoulder. Okay, now if I reach too far over here again, he'll block it and he'll throw me or counter me. Or if I come over the top like this, uh, you know, it looks good, but I, I don't, I'm kind of stuck. i got to do something else here. So I'm going to come around here. Now when I do it, now watch. If I come in and grab like this, he'll see me coming in, won't he? So I'm going to work around an angle. So if my right hand's reaching, I'm going to move around to my right and catch here. And now... What I can do, I can sidestep and hit an Osotogari. And a lot of times, that sidestep Osotogari, that side Osotogari is really hard to stop. It's really a high percentage throw. It's a biggie palm. So that's what we're going to work on now. We're not going to throw each other because I don't want you to clap, you know, clock each other too much in practice right now. I want you to work on the move. We'll throw later. Okay, so what we're going to bow. Get my hand. Here's my anchor. See how I was leading? I wasn't doing this, was I? Like this. All right, now watch. I want to work around to my right, because I'm a righty, and I want to get my right hand here. So when I do that, do I step this way? No. No, I kind of back step, don't I? Back step, and only one back step's all I need. Back step, catch. Now, as soon as I catch, elbows come down. See that? Okay, when I step in a cross body, hit the Osoto. So I've got little cues in my mind. I'm not a real bright guy. I have to remember these things by little things that I do. And when you're fighting, that's the best way to do it. Don't try to think like this happens. No, little things you do create something else that causes that to happen. That's why I always coached my guys, and that's why I always did myself. So as soon as we bow, hands there. Okay, I got my grip. I got my anchor. As soon as I sidestep, I get my grip. Sidestep, catch my grip. As soon as I get my grip, elbows down. So all things happen one right after the other. Elbows down. Now watch with my left foot. That's going to step across his body. And I throw with those foot of And he's really, it's hard to block. Even if he does a hip cut, if he tries to do a hip cut, if he hip cuts out, it's going to be even a harder throw. And that happens a lot. Rather than just coming straight with the Oso de Gari. Does that make sense? So now, you see how grips work into a throw? I have in my mind, I want to throw him with an Oso de Gari. I'm good at it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've thrown guys with this. And I've seen he's kind of weakness. He'll move for me. I've been watching this guy in the tournament. So as soon as bow, start here. I get my grip. Okay, I decide, okay I'm going to step side step. Catch it. He lets me have it. Oh, good. <laughs> Life's good for me. Catch sideways. Hit and go. Okay. Now, one thing I didn't do, I didn't come in and do this and try to load him up forward because he could really block me. I come across his body. An old coach of mine named Rene Pomerell taught me to do this way back about 1979, 80. And it really helped me a lot. Okay? It makes sense to throw him to his side. He doesn't, he's weak on his sides. And that's what we're working on right now. The side movement. It's very weak. One more time, then we go. Okay, I'm going to let you. You do five fit ins. Why don't you do ten fit ins? You do one. He'll do one ten times. Okay. So it'll be like this. It'll be my turn first. I get my anchor. Okay. I step. I grip. Good. I'm sorry. And he'll do it on me. Got the idea? Everybody got it. Back and forth. You don't need to throw him right now. It's kind of an uchikomi drill. A grip and uchikomi. But everybody see that? Take 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 things in time. It will take time to learn this. You won't learn it tonight. 